sure. Um, so the program is moving along very well. It, um, in terms of the air vehicle demonstrations, we have a couple aircraft that are almost completely built. One's a little further along than the other. Our Bell Helicopter Industry Partner is uh, really ready for ground testing at this point. We expect it to fly within the next month or so, barring any uh, last minute issues. So things are moving along really well there. Uh, our other industry partner that's going to fly is Sikorsky Boeing. And uh, that aircraft is uh, also fairly complete, complete in terms of build. Uh, there's some components that are that are awaiting, if you will. Blades is one of those components, but they're moving forward pretty quickly. They'll be uh, performing ground test on their ground test uh, apparatus probably in the next uh, couple of months. So by the end of the year, we should see some ground testing started on both both sides and some flight testing started on Bell side. So. Um, Mission System Architecture demonstration. We just finished the second demonstration, if you will, on that uh, effort. We just had an industry engagement on our next demonstration, which is our capstone demonstration. It'll start this coming year in uh, 2018, go through 2020. And so we're pretty excited really about what we're learning there. We're gaining a lot of knowledge in terms of how to open the weapon system up to an open architecture uh, type backbone. So things are moving pretty well. We know that the battlefield of the future is going to be in high demand of vertical lift. Uh, urban environments uh, are going to increase in size and, and being able to operate in an urban environment really takes vertical lift capability. So to both uh, do your reconnaissance, do your uh, armed uh, missions, do your insertion missions, it's going to take vertical lift. But we also know that uh, in terms of the longer ranges, uh, the, the better endurance you have on a vehicle, the more you can carry at one time, the better. So. It's no different really from a civil side when you think about the future. Everyone wants something that goes a little further, a little faster, uh, more efficient, right? Uh, from a green perspective, we, we don't want to just uh, keep pushing aircraft that are not aerodynamically uh, efficient through the air by putting more gas on it. So really I think these technologies bring a leap ahead in terms of performance opportunities. And uh, I'll say one thing that uh, architecture is going to bring. So the architecture, in terms of what we're learning, should open the weapon system up to provide flexibility for the future. So when we think about subsystems that are going to be needed on these aircraft in the in the 2030 and beyond time frame, you know, just like our phones do, technology advances so quickly in the digital world. So we need an aircraft that can also uh, flex very quickly in the digital world. And I think we're we're learning how to do that from an architecture point of view.